Hello and welcome to this electrical principles training video. In this video we're going to be looking at the subject of capacitors in series and parallel and I'm not on my own for this video. I have the supreme privilege of having the second year learners at North Lindsay College who are currently doing their British Steel apprenticeship so this is really exciting. So uh, give us a cheer then British Steel learners. Yeah. No I said give me a cheer please British Steel learners. Yeah. Let's get in there okay. So <laughs> As we say, in this video, we're going to be looking at the subject of uh, capacitors in series and parallel. So first things first, we're going to look at capacitors. So can anyone tell me what a capacitor is, roughly speaking? Someone give me a rough description of a capacitor. Anyone? Two metal plates separated by a dielectric. Very good. Two metal plates separated by a dielectric. Now, it's important that those metal plates are held quite close together, but they're not allowed to touch, because if they touch, it's no longer a capacitor. It's just a very expensive wire. Okay. So let's have a look at this. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking at the behaviour of capacitors when we connect them in series and parallel. Now I'm sure that during your first year you went over resistors in series and parallel in quite a lot of detail. So hopefully we can see exactly how uh, capacitors behave in series and parallel. So we're going to be testing capacitance. Okay, so I'm going to ask Charlie here. Could you set up my meter to measure capacitance for me there please bud? Very good, okay, so we've got that set up to measure capacitance. Hopefully you can see on the camera there, he's turned it to the correct symbol for a capacitor. If you'd have set that up to measure resistance, I think your teacher might have had a bit of a fit, so we're happy we've got that the right way around. Right, okay, so Iona, could you tell me what uh, that symbol says just at the top right there? Um, good guess, okay, so good, good on you for trying. Farads. Yeah, it's Farads. What's the letter in front of it though? Micro or nano. nano, yeah. Nano. So it's an N for nano. Yeah, can you remember what nano means? <laughs> it means small. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it does mean small. But in mathematical terms, it means a very specific kind of small. That's good. That's micro. micro. Yeah. Ten to the minus nine. Times ten to the minus nine. In other words, it's a billionth of a farad. Okay. So here we're talking about tiny little bits of a farad. We're looking at very very small amounts of capacitance, which is fairly common for capacitors. Now you can see this is sort of hovering about 0.1 nanofarads, so it's just kind of messing around there. So we don't need to worry about the 0.1 when we finish measuring this. So I'm just going to connect up my multimeter supplied by Mega from one side of the uh, capacitor to the other. And it's just currently doing its auto ranging. So you can see there now. Now this is interesting because we've got 0.469 and then we've got that symbol there. OK, now that's going to be impressive if someone can tell me what that means. Any ideas? Is that Pico? Uh, it's not Pico. That would be a P. Good guess. Any ideas what that symbol means? It looks a little bit like a U with a tail at the front of it. It's micro. It is micro. Well done, Dan. Okay, so we've got microfarads. <laughs> okay. Now, what's interesting? Okay, that number on there. What number have we got on there, Joe? Uh, point four six nine. Good. And does that look? familiar to any value that we've got on the board at the minute. Yeah, 470. Yeah, it's very close, isn't it? It's within like point, yeah, 001. But can you see that's in nanofarads and that there is in microfarads, okay? Now, the reason it's done that is it's, it's struggling to display the number in nanofarads. But do you all agree that roughly 470 micro, uh, sorry, 0 0.470 microfarads is the same as 470 nanofarads? We're all in agreement yeah. with that, yeah? Okay, good. So we're happy with that. Right then, so what we're now going to do is look at what happens when we connect capacitors in series with each other, okay? So I'm going to take another 470 nanofarad capacitor and I'm going to connect it in series with that one, okay? So they're in series with each other. Who's brave enough to tell me or have a guess at what the new value for capacitance will be? Okay, so you're saying 940, Joe, which means we add them together? Okay, what are you saying please, Ben? Half. You're saying it'll half, okay? So what you're saying is it'll be half of that value, okay? So two completely different opposed views, okay? So what we've got here, Joe, is slightly aggressively, okay? <laughs> saying that we'll be adding these together, okay? Whereas Ben, you're saying that we're gonna half one of the values. Does that sound familiar? We've got two components connected to each other, okay? And the value is halving. What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like resistors in parallel? Yeah, resistors in parallel. It sounds a lot like that, doesn't it? Okay. So, someone's got to be right. Okay. So we'll see who's right. We'll connect from one side to the other. Okay. We'll wait for the meter to tell us what it's going to be, 
and we've come out with 0.235 microfarads. Yeah, we've got one severely disappointed person. <laughs> okay, so we've got someone's right and someone's wrong. But you can see there that actually the value has halved from there. It's gone from 470 to 235, okay? So, what's really good, Ben, is that you remembered from your studies that this is behaving in, to the same rules that we find when resistors are connected in parallel, yeah? Okay? But when we connect capacitors in series, the value actually gets smaller, so we've got less capacitance. Does anyone know why that is? Why is it that when we connect these together, in series, we end up with less capacitance. It's like we've weakened the value of the capacitor. Any ideas? No? Can you remember what the value of a capacitor depends on? You said, Dan, that it was two plates held close to each other, separated by a dielectric. What happens to capacitance as you move the plates further apart? Yeah, the capacitance drops, doesn't it? Yeah? So what we're actually seeing here is we're seeing a combination of the <coughs> gap in this capacitor and the gap in this capacitor. And because they are combined with each other, it's like we've got a bigger gap in between the two plates of a capacitor, which means it won't hold as much charge and therefore has less capacitance, yeah? So just to test that, we've got a third 470 nanofarad capacitor. What's gonna happen when we've got three of these connected in series? What do we think is gonna happen to the total capacitance now? It'll be a third of the original value. It'll be a third of the original value. Who's gonna tell me what a third of 470 is? Uh, what? 160-ish? Uh, You're getting warm. <laughs> 153, that's a good guess, but if we times that by uh, three, we'd come up with 157. 400 and, sorry? 157. 157. I'm going to put you out of your misery because I, I can't see you all flailing around like this. Yeah, okay, it's hurting me too much. So if we think, if that was 450, divide that by three, what would that be? 450 divided by three? Sorry, I'm going to cut all this bit out of the video, don't worry about it. <laughs> It would be 150, wouldn't it? Okay, yeah, 150. And we've got 20 left over. So what's 20 divided by 3? 6.6. Good, so we're ended up with a total of? 156.6. Yes, absolutely. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we leave that bit there, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, what a clever group we've got here. Absolutely amazing, yeah, well done. Right, so we should get a value of 157 over here. Yeah, let's plug that in and we'll see what we get. And there it is, 157, yeah? So allowing for that little bit of tolerance, we've nailed it, yeah? Yeah, as Big Shaq would say, quick maths, I believe. Is that a thing? Yeah? Did I say that right, yeah? Okay. Right then, folks. So we can see there that because we're increasing effectively the distance between the plates of the capacitors, the capacitance is constantly dropping and getting smaller, yeah? Okay? And actually, it does follow the exact same rules for resistors connected in parallel with each other. So we could say that 1 over Ct, the total capacitance, will be equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3, and we could keep on applying that rule whatever number or value of capacitors we had. Agreed? Okay. Right, so now let's connect up our capacitors in a slightly different fashion. Okay. First of all, we're going to connect them up like this. So we've got 470 and 470. Okay. And how have I got these connected now, folks? In parallel. In parallel with each other, okay? So if I measure from one side of here to the other, what value of capacitance do you think we'll get now? Double. You think it's double, so you think we're just adding these values together, yeah? Okay, let's find out. Okay, so what have we come out with? 955, uh, sorry, 0.955 microfarads, which is 955 nanofarads. So is that approximately double that? Yeah, with a little bit of tolerance in there, absolutely spot on, okay? So you can see what's happening now. If I add another capacitor of the same value into the circuit, how are we going to find out what the total capacitance is? What will it be now? Yeah, it'll just be those three added together, won't it? Exactly. So if I put that in there now, we should get three times 470. This might be another moment where we need a big, long break in the video. Just to edit some stuff out, yeah? 1,410. 1,410, absolutely spot on, yeah, well done, uh, OJ, good work, yeah, very good. Right, so we'll plug that in, and you can see there, we've got something roughly around that mark, yeah, okay? So again, folks, we've got these capacitors connected in parallel, 
but now it's following the rules for resistors connected in series. We're just adding the values together and we'd find that whatever number or value of capacitors we connected up here. Why is the capacitance increasing? <coughs> really good guess but actually the gaps aren't changing now let's think again think about our structure of a capacitor it's two plates held together very closely without touching now here we're not changing the gap size because it's the same in every one but if we make the plates of the capacitor bigger and bigger and bigger what happens to capacitance it goes up so what's actually effectively happening here it's like we're adding together the areas of these three plates of these capacitors, which means we're making the capacitance larger and larger and larger the more we connect in parallel with each other. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay, so I'd like to say thank you very much to North Lindsay College for having us. Thank you very much to these excellent second year British Steel apprentice learners uh, for having us here today. And we hope that this video has helped you out. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, well done, everybody. Well done. That was the best video I've ever made, hands down. Yeah. Brilliant work. Very good. Oh, and well the thumbnail was just the picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> OJ just made this video, basically. He made it come to life. No, well done, everyone. That was brilliant.